worthy. Somebody say he's worthy. He's worthy. Now say it for yourself, Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy. Somebody say serious. 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 That's the theme this month. Seriously. When you say I walk by faith and not by sight, end it with seriously. When you say I am the head and not the tail, say seriously. Why? It is, it, what you're saying is, I'm not playing with this. I'm not playing with this. Say you can't handle this. I'm too real with this. I'm too serious with this. I'm not putting down my faith for worldly gain. Welcome to another afternoon, Sunday afternoon, um, family worship, breaking the chain, school of ministry. Minister Lawson speaking, for those who are already familiar with me, may you receive the grace and, grace and mercy of the Lord this morning, this afternoon. We're starting this title series, we're going to go 30 days with this. How about that? 30 days with this message. Title, this series title is The Main Battlefield. The Main Battlefield. And the first thing I want to say to you this morning, I want to say to you, dear soldier, for if you are a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, then you are a soldier, and I want to say, soldier, sleep not. Awake from thy sleep and give the Lord some praise. I want to say sleep not. Awake from your sleep and give God the glory. I want to say sleep not. Awake from your slumber and guard your heart with all diligence. For out of the heart comes the issues of life. Somebody say out of my heart. Out of my heart. Come on with power. Out of my heart. Out of my heart. Flow. Flow. The, issues the issues of my life. Of my life. Say some things, some things are about to be fixed, are about to be, fixed. Are about to be checked, are about to be, are about to be disciplined about to be and corrected and right now. Right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, get, you get whatsoever you say out of your mouth. Hallelujah. When you are serious, 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 and seriously about it, the word works for you. The word works on your behalf. Somebody say the word, the word works, works on my behalf. On my behalf. Somebody say Jesus, Jesus is that is living, that word, living for word for me. For me. He loves me. He loves me. Regardless of what the world says, he, he loves me. I am loved I am by the most high God. By the most high God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn your Bibles to the book of Job. I heard somebody say, not Job, but the book of Job. Right? Book of Job, chapter 2. Chapter 2. Excuse me, chapter 28. Chapter 28. The book of Job. Hallelujah. The book of Job, chapter 28. All right? Look at verse 7. You ready? Job chapter 28, verse 7. There is a path which no fowl knows and which the vultures I has not seen. But I'll tell you this morning, God knows the path. God knows the way. Wherever you are in your faith, the Father knows. There is a path which no fowl knows and which the vulture's eye has not seen. The Father knows the steps of every righteous man. Not every self-righteous man, but everyone who is now living in the righteousness of God. For those who are now believers under the New Testament, 
You are the righteousness of God in Christ. There is a path which no fowl knows and which the vulture's eye has not seen. The fowl are demons and the vultures are demons. There is a place that Satan not only can't go, he has not seen it. That should make you real curious as to where is this place or who is this place? Because Jesus is the who and the place that Satan cannot go. He can never say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Ghost for no man can say Jesus is Lord except for by the Holy Ghost. If Satan was in agreement with Jesus, he wouldn't be Satan. He would still be Lucifer and he would still be in his first place. He would know the way. And he would know the who and how to get to the way. He's blinded. And you're not blinded. The Bible says Satan has the power of blindness to blind man from receiving Jesus' Lord, from knowing the way, from knowing the truth, and from being and from receiving a fellowship with he who is light. He, he got that. But guess what we got? We have the knowledge of the most high God. Unhindered and unfringed. Without blindness. No longer behind the veil. Where darkness was Lord. Where Satan was Lord. When Jesus died the veil was ripped. And now there's no separation between me and you and the Father. Those who love him do his words and the Father has come unto him, come into him and made man out of all things in the world, made man his dwelling place. The most high God choosing you, the believer, to dwell in as his sanction. Somebody say, I am, I am the sanctuary, the sanctuary of, God. of God. There is a path which no fowl knows and which the vulture's eye has not seen. The lion's wealth have not trodden it underfoot, nor the fierce lion passed by it. Satan can't pass by the way you have legal access into. Satan cannot enter into the secret place. And so in Proverbs it says, as the deer panted for the water brook, which is revealing a secret, it's telling the believer when you're out there in the forest of life, looking for berries and you smell the wolf don't panic and don't fear run the path that was set for you and find the water for when you find the water bro and step into it not observe it not just say you know it but step into the water brook, which is symbolic for the word of God, which is symbolic for Jesus' bosom. When you step into it, the wolf will lose his scent. Why? The fowl don't know the path. The vultures I have not seen the bosom of Jesus Christ. They fell before he became Lord and Savior to man. 
What they knew, they know no longer. For God has changed things. Somebody say, my God. My God. He changes, changes things. things. When you are in the forest of life and you smell the wolf in your mind, on the main battlefield of your mind, don't panic. Don't freak out. Don't start calling all your brethren at 3 in the morning. You might need one at 3, but you don't, you don't necessarily got to call them all at 3. Follow the path that was made for you. Somebody say the path of the Lord. Path of the it, Lord. Will it will never change. People, People. Outside, of outside of Christ don't know the path. Don't know the path. But now we'll know the path. Because the preacher, because the preacher is, saying, is saying what thus saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus is, is the path. The Not the man who calls himself Jesus. Not the, man who. Not the lady who calls herself Jesus. Or the prophet of the Lord. But Jesus, Jesus. who is the Lord. There's only one living word. Amen. Jesus is that living word. You ready for this? Jesus is the living word that came out of the Father's mouth. I'm just going to let you have that. You take that into your meditation and your study. Jesus is the living word that came out of the Father's mouth. You see, everybody like putting emphasis on the book, and that's great in its place. But there is a written word. There is a spoken word that came before the written word. There is a word that is responsible for the written word being established. You see, the person that penned the living word is the Father. Jesus is the expressed image of the Father. So the Father is the penman of the living word. The living word, he's the word of God. But the Father has the pen. Oh, snap. Oh, something hit me. I'm feeling good right now. I don't mean in my body. Only, I mean, I can locate myself. I found myself right now where I'm supposed to be. The living word is Jesus, the Christ. He's not the pen. He's the word. The father who spoke the word is the pen. So when you worship, worship in order. Worship the Father, worship the Son, and worship the Holy Ghost. Jesus will never be higher than his Father. And neither will his Father be higher than his Son. Why? They are one. They are equal in divinity. And they never break structure. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wanted to show you that this morning. Before we even got into the message. So that giving you the message would be simpler and easier. Job chapter 28 verse 7. There is a path which no fowl knows and which the vultures eye have not seen. I'm telling you this morning, the fowl are demons and the vultures are demons. The lion's whelp have not trodden it, 
nor the fierce lion passed by. Verse 9, he put forth his hand upon the rock. He overturned the mountains by the roots. He cut off our rivers among the rocks, and his eyes seeth every precious thing. God is in charge. And he knows things and knows of places no devil has ever been and no man has ever gone before. Yeah. He knows there's more change for you. Change that you may not know is already prepared for you. God knows and Satan doesn't know. God knows of more wisdom for you and the path that you got to take to receive it is by faith. Satan don't know it. Satan don't walk with God by faith. He may use the principle of faith, but he's not in a relationship with the Father and the Son by faith. So he don't know the path that was made for you by faith. But you know. Why? The Holy Spirit leads you there all the time. He leads you down that path all the time. He leads you into the secret place all the time. Turn to Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 7. This is our scripture reading for today. This is where it's coming from. Mark chapter 7, verse 15 to verse 23. Ready? Read. There is nothing from without a man that enters into him that can defile him, but the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was entered in who? Jesus, into the house from the people. His disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he said unto them, Are you so without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatsoever thing from without enters into the man, it cannot defile the man? Because it enters not into his heart, but into the belly and goes out into the drought, purging all meats. You know, do you know why I am no longer a drug addict? Do you want to know why I don't have stars and hanging from my belt saying how long I've been sober minded? Do you want to know why I was able to overcome the voice of the adversary telling me you are my prisoner, you are a prisoner to this, you will never be free from this? Tell him, he telling me to take it one day at a time and one day at a time will last you the rest of your life. Do you want to know why I'm free? It's because the drugs that I use to defile my physical body didn't have the power to defile my spirit. Drugs are not what defiles your spirit. The outside object is not what defiles your spirit, man. It's what's inside your spirit, man, that is spoken, that defiles you in the presence of the Lord. It's not drugs that defile you in the presence of the Lord. The drugs defeat you, your mind. But what makes you a sinner defiled in the eyes of the Lord is sin in the heart. Are you listening to me? Sin in the heart spoken from the mouth, acted upon from the heart, is what makes a man dirty before God. That's why 
we must change and only the word of God can change you. That's why you have to be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You have to know the word of God. A workman need not a workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You need to know the word of God. If the lady a man commits adultery with had the power to keep the man under the sin of adultery mm -hmm. until that lady decided you could be free, you would remain in bondage. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, the outside object is not the cause of man's bondage. It's the inside bondage. Mm -hmm. It's what's, so, it's what's in the treasure of your heart. And if you could be freed in your heart, then you could be freed in your mind, and then your outside uh, uh, surroundings, your outside standing appearance, it would change. That's why I know true deliverance doesn't come from the outside of man. When God delivers a man, he does it on the inside of man. God! walks inside of a man, Amen. deals with his heart, de therefore deals with his enemy, and brings him freedom from the chain. With what? One touch of his word. The main battlefield of war that Satan brings, Satan brings a, a battle against the main battlefield. Where is it? Somebody say, I understand. As a believer, it is the mind. Somebody say, I understand that the main battlefield where the enemy attacks is the mind. Somebody say, I know that now. I know that. Satan and his principalities must be fought and defeated in the mind. His objective is to attack at the very center of your being, within your innermost being, your heart, and your mind. Everyone in this room and every believer watching knows that if you got an issue, it's in your head first. If you got an issue believing, it's in your head. Somebody say, if there's a stronghold, if there's a stronghold it's, in the mind. it's in the mind. Let's take a look at Jesus Hallelujah. and how he explained to his disciples where man is made dirty before God and sin is conceived. Why? The Father is dealing with me about having a clean life. He's, he's dealing with me about having a clean life. And I'm not upset. At 50 years old, I'll take it. At 50 years old, I'll take it. Why? I was not raised in deliverance. I was reborn into it. I was born in bondage. Because when Adam sinned, sin fell upon every man, even before they were ever born. When you were just a seed, you were a sinner. Before you, when you were just a seed and you, you didn't even have a body, you were a sinner. When you were unborn soul in the body, you were a sin. I'm going to read it from the Amplified Bible, which is called the Tab for short. For from within, I'm reading Mark 7, um, chapter 7, verse 21 to 23 again, but from the Amplified. 
For from within, that is, out of the heart of man, come base and wicked thoughts. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So, no man really has a right to say, Satan made me do it. Why? Satan is not a man's heart or a man's mind. Satan is a being created by God. He's a spirit. He's a spirit. Somebody say he's full of sin. He's full of sin. He's a spirit, he's a spirit who is full of sin. Who is full of sin. And will never, according to this book, be redeemed. be redeemed, but, but in prison. In prison. <laughs> For from within, that is, out of the heart of man come base and wicked thoughts. Wicked thoughts come from within a man. Sexual immorality comes from within a man. Somebody is going to receive help today because the word, the living word, has already purposed in himself to deliver all who need deliverance and are willing to receive the word. Sexual immorality doesn't come from the outside of man. It comes from within man. Incest, adultery, fornication, masturbation, whatever's in that list, porno, whatever's in that list, rape, whatever's in that list, sexual fantasies. All sexual immorality comes from within a man. So now, Christian, the Lord is helping you. If you are a Christian and you can and you're having an issue walking in the victory that is above sexual immorality, don't get all bent out of shape. Mm -hmm. God is not a condemner. Yes. He's a liberator. Yes. And if you will hear him, you will hear your freedom and take it and run with it and be free for the rest of your life. For from within come base and wicked thoughts, sexual immorality, stealing. Stealing comes from within. If you steal, it's not the outside object that's making you steal. It's because stealing is inside of you. I have stole when I was younger, I was stole as an adult. And you know, I never really liked stealing because I felt that stealing came from an insecure heart. That because of insecurity, that person is enabled of going out and getting his own. So he steals. It is the nature of a thief to steal. I didn't say it was the nature of the thief who comes to kill, steal, and destroy. I said it is the nature of a thief that steals. Stealing comes from within a man. And uh, for you women, man is universal in many places in the life. When God says son, he's talking about women and men. Hallelujah. Murder comes from within a heart, from within side of a man. For every man and woman who has ever murdered, it wasn't because you heard a voice say murder. That's your smoke screen. That's the enemy's smoke screen. To get people from seeing where it really comes from. Murder comes from within, not from without. Murder comes from within, not from without. Adultery comes from within and not from without. 
It's vital if you're going to deal with the main battlefield correctly. It's vital that you know these things about the main battlefield and how to operate in it. Coveting a greedy desire to have more wealth. It doesn't come from without. It doesn't come because you see more money. It comes because having more money, more than you need, is inside. Dangerous and destructive wickedness, violence in its many forms, it's not coming from without. It's not coming because you cursed at me or because you yelled at me. It's coming because it was inside. It comes out because it's inside. If it's not inside of you, it's not going to come outside of you. And that's why non-believers can't bless the name of the Lord. His name is not in their heart. And so on that note, Many believers, you will not do a whole bunch of things if the word of God is in your heart because what's inside of you will come out of you. Let's use profanity, for instance. Why does a man use profanity? It's not because he wants. It's not because he wants to or chooses to. It's because that's who he is. It's inside of him. All right? Dangerous and destructive wickedness. Deceit. Deceit is not from the outside. Deceit is from the inside. Unrestrained. Indecent. Conduct. It doesn't come from the outside. If you're a filthy minded person, you're filthy minded because you're filthy minded. If you're a nasty arrogant, prideful person. It's not because those things came from the outside and attacked you. No, you were born in sin. You were born that way. If you, if you have a problem with changing, I keep hearing the Lord say changing. If you have a problem with changing, it's not because of outside forces. No, outside forces, namely demons or you know, um, unlearned people may be uh, helping you stay bound, but your source of being bound is the sin that's inside you. Conduct, an evil eye. Having an evil eye, which is having the eye of envy. When you look on things to envy and lust, that's not coming. It's not because the car that the other guy got looked more better than yours that you want it or that you don't like him because he got a better car than yours. It's because envy is inside you. You're an envious person. Good Lord. I'm going to say that again. It's not when you lust on another man's wife, it's not because she necessarily looked better than your, your wife. It's because you're a lustful person. See, in order to walk in the victory in the mind of Christ Jesus, you're going to have to know what consists in the carnal mind. And you're going to have to have a reason for shunning the carnal mind and receiving the mind of Christ Jesus. See, we say a lot of things as ministers, but sometimes we miss stuff, and that, you know, we're still in this natural body, I get it. But if you let the Holy Spirit tell you the truth, he'll show you things. Some of us don't know how to walk in the mind of Christ Jesus because we don't even know what the carnal mind is. We don't know the difference between darkness and light. Listen to the dark heart. Or what we've read so far, it's about the dark heart. How many of you watching me are watching me? And after hearing this, you, you know from this point on if you have a dark heart or a heart filled with light. How can a man in the dark be filled with a heart of light 
when the man has not come to the light to receive him and to know him as the light. Many will say he is the light, she is the light, this is the way, but God only made one way. So it's important to know his way or you will be deceived into knowing another way. And at the, at the day of judgment, when God asks you, why did you go that way? You will not be able to say, because I was led that way. He's going to say, no, deceit was in your heart. You misled yourself. You deceived yourself. You heard the truth. You didn't receive it. And you went the other way. Deception was in your heart. Slander, evil speaking, evil speaking. When we talk about one another as brethren, that's not coming because I did something or because I wore something or I looked a certain way or I made a mistake or I made an error before you. If you talk about me wrong and justly, as we are all members of the body of Christ making up the church, that's coming from inside you. You're a slanderous, evil-speaking person. I know a lot of people who are new people in the world. I was one of them too. I grew up with slander inside. Some of my family members have that issue right now. Everything is what she said and what he did and all he said and all he did. And, uh, uh, uh. Slander didn't come because you made me mad. Slander is born within a man who was born in the dark. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I will see the word of the Lord to change me. Therefore, by faith, I am changed. I'm getting better. Slander, he was speaking, maliciousness, misrepresentation, look, misrepresentation comes from within. So if you stand before the Lord in the day of judgment, he tells you, why are you a hypocrite? You can't say because of this and because of that. You just got to say the truth, Lord. It was just, that's who I am. I misrep I, I, I mis I misrep you, Lord, mm -hmm. by saying this in front of the camera and then walking a different way outside of the camera. Mm -hmm. Abusiveness. Look at this. Come on, everybody. Focus. Abusiveness. Somebody, some woman, you may be watching, you may be trying to figure out why he keep going upside my head, why he keep trying to hurt me. Some man, why she keep trying to hurt me? Why is he so abusive? Why is she so, so, uh, 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 look, look, and then try to blame it on the devil. There's an abusive spirit attacking me and holding me in bondage. No, Satan doesn't come and put you in bondage. Again, as a believer, until you sin again. Look, abusiveness comes from the inside of a man. Abusiveness is in the mind of a person. If, if abusiveness is inside of you, unchecked by the word of God, and you don't know how to live our life and how to deal with your problems and how to discipline your emotions, it's going to come out of you. Why? Because it's inside of you. If the person across the hall is abusive because it's in his heart and you're not because it's not in your heart, you're not going to be abusive. The person across the hall is going to be abusive. Abusive people have an issue on the inside. Yeah. And guess what it is? It's abusiveness. It's abusiveness. Pride. That is the sin of an uplifted heart. Pride is the sin of an uplifted heart against God and man. What is pride? Pride is an uplifted heart against God and against man. Pride is an uplifted heart against all God stands for. 
And now I want to say this because I heard some people, I saw some things this week and I heard some people say they was Christians. And I heard them say uh, uh, they believed in Jesus Christ. Right? But they do everything opposite and lead men astray from the living word of God. I'm telling you, they're false prophet and, and their heart are filled with devilish philosophies and heresies. Yes. They are truly children of the lie. Slanderers of the most high God. Why? That's who they are inside. Misrepresentation, abusiveness, pride, that is to the sin of an uplifted heart against God and man. Foolishness, look at this, foolishness. Is inside of a person. Foolishness doesn't come because somebody outside of you gave it to you or because you went, didn't go to school. Foolishness is born in a man who is born under sin. It's inside of him. It's inside of him. That's why you got to be careful who you call a fool. See, a man may make a mistake because he's unlearned. That doesn't mean he's a fool. Because which one of us in the body of Christ has stopped learning? If we all have, then we might as well address each other as fools if that's what being a fool means, but I don't think so. A fool is one who denied Jesus as Lord and said in his heart, I am God. I will sit above your throne. My word is the final word. Yes. Foolish say, I will do what I will and not what thus saith the Lord. That's not my opinion. Those days are quickly shrinking for the word of the Lord will supersede the opinion of man. An uplifted heart. Pride is an uplifted heart against God and man. Foolishness, folly, lack of sense, uh, recklessness, recklessness. How many times do you see reckless people? How many times have you been reckless? See, in order... To have the victory in the battlefield of mind, you have to go to the root cause of the issues. Recklessness. It don't come because you ain't finished the 10th grade. Mm -hmm. It comes from within. Men are born with it. Thoughtlessness. People who don't think about other people, don't think about God, don't care what God think about life, don't care about themselves, don't... Don't, don't, don't consider other people's feelings. Thoughtlessness comes from within a person. If you're around a thoughtless preacher, run. 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 A thoughtless preacher shall be struck by the adversary. Mm -hmm. And when he is struck and broken, his body will be struck and broken and scattered and led captive by demonic heresy and demonic lies. You know how many people, because the minister wasn't strong in the word, the enemy came and attacked and took him into captivity again, into bondage, took him into fear, and the congregation got scattered and they say it came, and now some of those who were believers, you know, now they believe in New Age movement. Ain't written nowhere in the word. Where New, New Age movement come from mm -hmm. if it didn't came from God? It came from Satan, the God of this world. So when some people say, yeah, I hear you. I'm talking to you today. You say you worship God, but who you really worship is the God of this world. I'm going to say his name for you. Satan is the prince and the power of the air, the God of this world. But Jesus is the Lord and Savior 
of the believer who is no longer a part of this world, who no longer fears the valley of the shadow of death. Mm -hmm. So therefore they can form no more to the ideas and precepts and heresies and lies of the enemy and his ministers of darkness. All these evil purposes and desires come from within and they make the man unclean and render him unhallowed. What makes a man unclean? It's when those things are in his heart. Turn to Matthew chapter 12. We're dealing with the mind this whole month, except for next Wednesday. I won't do it. Uh, from the next time you see me, I will continue in this. Matthew 12. Uh, and the reason we're doing this is because if we're going to, they, I, you know, I wanted to know, Lord, why wasn't I being successful here and being successful there? He, he, he said, Yo, you are successful. He, he said, I made you successful, but the reason you're having a struggle with it is because you haven't disciplined your mind to know the word the way you should. Then I had to accept that there were many things present in my life that didn't come because Satan brought them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the easy way out for many Christians. Oh, the devil did it. The devil made me do it. No, the true source of every curse is inside a man's heart. Because you can't curse what God hasn't cursed. Mm -hmm. You can't curse what God has blessed. But if the one who received the blessing doesn't understand the blessing, he will forfeit his pot of porridge for something else mm -hmm. and lose his inheritance. Y'all know that story? Yep. Hallelujah. So, you got to understand these things in order for you not to give up your inheritance. Having a good grip on your inheritance, Matt, means having a good understanding of your heart and your mind. And if you're losing, you're not losing because Christ didn't give you the victory. You're losing because you won't be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You yeah. think you know the word, so you won't study. You won't look at it. You won't decide. You won't let the Holy Ghost teach you. You think because you read one scripture one time, you think you know it. Hallelujah. And the enemy is playing off of that. He's playing off of that. He's playing off of that. I'll tell you one thing he will do. He'll bring you many opportunities to get more busy so that you will have less time to study the Word of God. Why? Uh -huh. The less time you have is the less you grow. Uh -huh. The less you grow is the more advantage he can take over you. Even God says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. knowledge. Matthew chapter 12. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Feeling pretty smooth today. My goodness. Somebody say drive like a, like you in a Cadillac. Uh, as opposed to a hoop. You know what I mean? Hallelujah. Time flies when you're preaching. I wish I could pause that. Just pause it at 12.52. Just stop it right there. Just take y'all into 2 2.30 p.m. <laughs> That's when the word is good, though. Amen. Oh, yeah. When the word is not good to you, it seems like you're in church for a long time. You can't oh, be still. You can't focus. You, you, nobody outside you necessarily knows it, but I'm revealing it right now. When you are not focused correctly, one hour, you'll be wanting to run out of here and run nowhere, run right into a chicken sandwich. Mm -hmm. Be sleepy, go home. And all of a sudden, you wide awake. Hey. Mm. Wow. The natural man does not desire the things of God. 
The natural man does not desire the things of God. The natural man does not desire the things of God because the natural man has a dark heart, a dark mind. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Matthew 12, verse 34. We're going to pick it up at verse 34. Jesus is talking, right, mm -hmm. to the Pharisees. <laughs> He's going to tell the Pharisees, because of who you are, that's why you do and say, what you do and what you say. Are you listening, Christian? Yeah. I'm telling you, he's telling me, I am who I am mm -hmm. because it's in my heart. No, not, I'm not saying that we are the great I am. I'm telling you we are who we are because that's who we are in our heart. And in order to change from the not so good person to the very good person, there has to be an exchange on the battlefield. An exchange with what you already have, with what God is presenting you with, and that is Himself. That is the Word of God. For how can light be separated from light? Light equals light. And darkness equals darkness. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Look at this. O generation of vipers, you snakes, you serpents. How can you being evil speak good things? Look. How can you being evil, how can an evil person speak good things? How can an evil person speak good things? You know you see little kids... And they acting real bad according to your law book of being real good. And then they grow up. And they and they not the same, they different, and they better and all, you know, very knowledgeable and loving. You you know what happens? Somewhere in that child's life, wisdom and knowledge came and they took it. Wisdom and knowledge is the rod that beat foolishness out of the heart. Of babes. Come on, talk to me. I know, I know, I know, I know I'm in class. I know I'm in class. I can tell by the sound. The word of God is the rod of what? Correction. The word of God is good to rebuke, to reprove, to exalt, right? To discipline, to heal, to bring peace. To take foolishness out of the heart of a babe. Yes. There are babes who call themselves adults. Who God is using his rod today to take the foolishness out of your heart. Jesus is Lord, I tell you. And the way into the secret place where no foul move, where no vulture can see. Mm -hmm. And vultures see far, where no lion has trodden underfoot, where no lion has roared with fear. How will you know it if you have not surrendered your life to, to the Father the way he said and not the way man said in the other writer of the other book? Oh, generation of vipers, I didn't say it. Ministers don't have to say a lot of things. All they got to do is say what God told them to say. Oh, generation of vipers, this is the worst genera generation of vipers man has ever lived in up to date, right now. Oh, generation of, vi of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The proof of who you are is inside your heart. The condition of the main battlefield of your life determines the outcome 
and direction of your life. This is challenging. Why? You have Christians sitting stuck. They have received the lie again to fear and become captive again within them own selves. Not that God disdelivered them. God doesn't disdeliver people. He delivers people. People have become unmovable, incapable of acting out faith. Faith that they say they receive. Faith that God say you receive when you hear and when you hear and when you hear and when you hear the word of God. They have become, uh, come on Lord, what's that word we always use? Impotent. They have become the man who is sitting by the pool of Bethesda waiting for someone to put them in the water. Satan has immobilized them, therefore immobilizing their faith. They can't operate. They can't operate. They can't operate. They can't operate by faith. Not because they can't operate, but because they cannot operate under Sin. You can only operate by faith in God's word by the faith you receive from God's word. Say that with me. I can only operate. I can only operate. Come on, with a little more power. I can only operate. I can only operate by faith, by faith. Towards, God. towards God because of because the, the faith, faith that comes to me comes to from, God's from God's word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So once you stop being ye, being ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. What happens to your mind again? What happens to your heart again? Those things that are within, that's all you have to operate. Why? Those things are in you. They're growing in you. How can a deceitful man be nothing but deceitful? He's deceitful inside. How can a, a liar be anything but a liar? He is a liar inside. Mm -hmm. And so in order to deal with in order to walk right in, in, in the battlefield of your mind, in victory, you have to operate in the mind of Christ Jesus, which is none of these things. When darkness is present, what is present? Darkness. When he who is light comes, what does darkness do? Flee. It flees. So if these are in your heart, okay, God is not condemning you. I'm not condemning you, but I'm telling you, you better not stay there because these things that are in a man's heart prevent a man from entering the kingdom of God according to his word, not according to mine. And now you decide, because I'm that preacher. I'm just going to give it to you plain, and then you decide, because I never would, it never was meant for me to choose for you life or death. God puts life, the choice of life and death before every man and every woman. Mm -hmm. You have to choose for yourself. I'm not even mad about who's going to hell and who's not going to hell. Yo, you chose. Why? My father is so gracious, so full of grace, that he makes sure that every man hears the word at least once. Yeah. Thank you. And so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not grievous about that. I mean, in my prayers, Lord, you said that. You wish that no man would perish, so Lord, reach out to every man, and he's doing that. God is doing that. The word of God is internationally known. The book above all books, and man is still trying to write a book better. But you can't use lies to write a better book. So therefore, you can't use these things to make a better man. Are you listening to me? Yes. The mind of Christ must be used to make a better man. We were we? Verse 35. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. Do I have to say any more about that? No. So when you say, oh, wow, um, they robbed that woman and knocked her down and took her pocketbook and she was 68 years old and then they shot her. They didn't have to shoot her. Why did they shoot her? 
because murder was in their heart, according to Mark chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. Because envy was in their heart, wickedness was in their heart. Wicked people. Wicked. You did it, they did it, the judge said, you did it because you were wicked. See, I didn't, I didn't say they should forever be punished. Because if that was the case, we would be forever punished. Yes. We were given the choice to live or to die, stay the same or to receive Jesus Christ and live his way. Therefore, prove it to the Father that we love him. For those who love him, says Jesus, do his what? Commandments. Verse 36, but I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they give account therefore in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. You talk inside your heart. You talk on the battlefield of your mind before you ever speak a word out of the heart. Are you listening to me? You speak in your heart and in your mind before you speak a word out of your mouth. And that's why your words are very, very important. Why? They determine whether you chose life or you chose death. I'm not sick is not a death statement. Right, Eden? It's a life statement. I am the head and not the tail. It's not a death statement. It is a life statement. I am the seed of Abraham. It's not a death statement. It's a life statement. Yes. I will assembly with the brethren and, and experience the corporate anointing. It's not a death statement. It's a life statement. Jesus is Lord. The Father sent him. He died for me. He was raised for me. He shed his blood for me. He took a beating in his body for me. He bore my sins on the cross. He took all my iniquities and all my transgressions. And by his wounds I am healed. It's not a declaration of death, but a declaration of faith. And if it's in you, you can say it. And if it's in you, that's who you are. That's what you're going to get. Verse 37, for by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Go down to verse 39. But he answered after they asked him for a sign in verse 38. But he answered and said unto them, an evil eye, look, didn't we read in Mark 7, 21 to 23, an evil eye comes from within? Right? An evil eye, an adulterous generation, seeketh after a sign. So now we know in Christianity that everybody's seeking a sign outside of Christ Jesus' way of doing things is really under the curse of the Lord. Spiritual death, poverty, sickness, and disease. For a true believer who knows the path will never seek for a sign while we have his word to be guided by. Amen. I didn't say you might not, you won't ever have a desire to see Jesus because that's my Lord. Mm -hmm. That's my Lord. I was talking to him the other day, Jesus, mm -hmm. you feel like stepping up and walking with me, mm -hmm. but if you don't, I got your word. I know you're there. Right. I know you. So I didn't, I didn't say don't have a desire to be with the Lord. But if you need a sign to do what he has already said, you're misled and that deception is inside your heart. The battlefield on your mind is not being won. An evil and adulterous generation seeketh out their sign and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. 
Now, I'm only going to say this one time today. The heart of the earth is where? Because the Christians who don't study, they make such debate out of, out of simple word that if they just stop talking and listen to the Lord, he'll tell them what is what, which way is up, and which way is down. Yeah. Where is the heart of the earth? Come on, somebody speak it out. It's in the earth. The heart of the earth can't be in the moon. The heart of the earth can't be in the sky. The heart of the earth can't be inside you. The heart of the earth is in the earth. Duh. That's where we go. Duh. Right? For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise. Now, I don't want to read that. I said what I had to say. I want to read one more scripture to you today. Romans 10. Why? Wow. In order for me to talk about the battlefield of mind, I have to talk to you about salvation because you can't have the miracle victory power of Jesus operating your life until you give your life to Christ. And so let's do that. Because I, I I hear false prophets these days, they all over the place telling telling people you don't you don't gotta believe Jesus, you don't gotta go to the Father. And then you got some devil sitting in some people telling people to say there's so many ways to Christ. Listen to me. You were poor. You had nothing. You had peas in your head and roaches in your closet. And the most high God gave you an opportunity to prosper. But you ain't just want prosperity. You were greedy. And greed comes from inside your heart. And you operated in that greed in the world. Satan, the prince of the power of the air, the god of the devilish contract, offered you that contract and you took it. And now you're against Christ. You better watch what you do. And watch what you say. Because mm -hmm. every man who lives has to die. And then the judgment. Be warned. Mm -hmm. Now you're a devil because you got money. You got people following you. Telling them they're the great I am. There is no man that is the great I am. But the great I am will come and live within man. And this is how he does it. Romans chapter 10. Devilish people. He called them sons of serpents. Sons of demons. Romans chapter 10. Hallelujah. You probably got it before me. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. Starting at verse... I like to start up. Let's start with verse 7. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. So now you know there will be no more raising up of Jesus. He's raised. So when they tell you, oh, somebody is over in so-and-so country raising deep Jesus from the dead, don't go. That's for non-believers who don't know. Verse 8. But what saith if the word is near nigh thee, near thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach. When the word of God is preached, there's something, it reveals something inside of a man's heart. Above all those other things we read in Mark 7, in man's heart. It reveals the power to receive salvation. It's in you. The power to choose life and death is in every man. Verse 9. That if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Now look, listen to me. I read it. That's not my opinion. Listen. There's only one way to do it. Don't follow people who's telling you it's another way. Don't read a book that's telling you it's another way. There is no other way. 
Don't follow somebody because they're rich. Don't follow somebody because they're rich. And their outwardly glamour makes them look better than what they really are. God sees them for what they really are. Vipers, snipers of the devil, trying to kill off man from God. Be aware and be careful. This is the way. Go read it for yourself. I'm not going to lead you to salvation. I'm leading you to salvation by sending you to God's word. Go to God's word, Romans chapter 10, and read it for yourself and then follow the instructions you receive. You know why? If you don't know for yourself, anybody will be able to tell you. These are those days where if you don't know for yourself, anybody will be able to tell you. How dangerous is the day that there's a possibility for you to ignore the grace of God and then be led by any other spirit. That's a, that's, a, that's a dangerous day. Verse 9. That if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. <clears throat> We're dealing with the main battlefield. And if you're wondering why I'm using the word mind and heart, it's because if you look carefully and if you are here and you have heard today, the heart, the mind, the mind that, 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 that the writer is talking about, it's not just the place where you think about eating or think about sleeping. He's talking about the heart of the inner man, your spirit. That's why he said, guard your heart for out of it. Guard it with all due diligence, for out of it comes the issues of life. Now, I want to say to you, as we close, I pray that this word has been a blessing to you. Hallelujah. Take a good look at yourself, for out of the heart come the issues of life. What was preventing me from sharing this message in the past was my fear to deal with the issues. Um, but like I said earlier, when you have a relationship with he who is light, light always produces wisdom and knowledge. And with wisdom and with, with, with wisdom and knowledge, you can walk a pretty strong walk of faith. And so I encourage you again, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, by the word of God. Get it, study it, learn it. Don't assume it. Don't add your opinion. Don't add nothing. Don't take nothing away. Read the book. Get with a good, strong teacher who is not calling himself Jesus or the prophet Moaz who has been given the secret scriptures that nobody else got. You know what I mean? Just walk in the word. Walk by faith and not by sight. This is Minister Lawson coming from Family Worship, Breaking the Chain School of Ministry. I'm reminding you, we have a website, www.familyworships, with an S, dot com. Go there. Learn who we're about and what we do. Hallelujah. And if you have people who you would like for us to assist you with in prayer, Leave their names on the website. I believe there's a place for you to leave their names. And um, if not, I believe our emails are there as well. You can email us and leave the name. If you want to talk to us, you can leave a phone number or uh, leave your message in the email. 
And uh, we love you, and God is full of grace, and grace is here to deliver you. So receive God's grace, and so shall you be delivered. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Hallelujah. Come on, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.